Sitting pretty in front of the Mechanical Engineering Department, University of Joss, is a green locally built mini sports car and is the final year project of a team of 500 level students at the same department. In January 2022, after the defense, news of their work made rounds on social media to the amazement of many Nigerians who applauded their feet. The car is Aspira Espo, and we got the name, they are French names actually. Aspira stands for strive, like to strive, and Espo means hope. So we're striving because we believe there's hope for Africa to meet up with the world in terms of automobile technology. The team say when the time to work on their project came, they wanted to stand out and to put minds together to come up with something different. Yes, when we started the project, I told most of my colleagues, I said, this will take us places. When we finished this, I told them that by God's grace, this year, I want us to make either an electrical car or a solar powered car. And by God's grace, we'll actualize that dream. They started working on the project in May, even though there were fears they wouldn't meet the deadline, but with their determination and support from those around them, including their lecturers, they were able to complete it in due time. At the first, at the first run, most, most of the lecturers were actually not too direct with us because you know that the, the time frame was not on our side. Then secondly, they were not, there was not any positive vibe coming from most of them per se, but I believe that they actually had our back. My department, that's from the institution, they gave us support. Yes, uh, initially though, they were consigned with us being able to meet up on time with the project. But as time went on, we, keep, we were persuasive, telling them that we'll meet up. Any hiatus, we can be able to meet up. They gave us that try and here is the outcome of the work. So for them being able to give us that chance and that try alone, I can commend them for that. They supported us very well. And in terms of our uh, other aspects, like our designs, they kept on supervising us to see that we make things right. Being a fan of cars, I was like, wow, I think I love this project, but I can tell you it won't be easy. Because the reason why I say it won't be easy is because you don't find design of cars in textbooks. Because it's patent to the companies, so they don't release their secrets. So it means that you have to apply the knowledge from the classroom in the designs. So I think this is great, but if you guys think that you have learned enough, which we know that we have taught you guys enough, then go ahead. But the finance also, I hope you guys are up to tax. They say yes. I say, well, then go ahead. I'm ready to supervise you guys. Many would wonder how they got inspired to embark on such a project, and the response brings in Benny Automobile into the story. In 
2020, Jerry Mallow, the current leader at Benny Automobile, built the first Nigerian carbon fiber sports car named Benny Puri. And so tapping from his pool of knowledge from an internship with him, the team were able to build theirs. Uh, Benny Automobile, the person of Jerry Malo, he inspired us in so many ways. Like He exposed us to a lot of things and he made us realize that we can achieve these things without thinking like there are something that is not achievable. So he, he exposed it. We, and now during our 300 level, we went for a conference he organized, and during that conference, we had a, he, we had a lectures. He, he did the lectures for us, and during that lectures, we, he exposed us to a lot of things, and he showed us some of his works, and that was where we picked interest, and we decided to go for our CS1, 1,300 level in the company. After their internship, they decided they wanted to build a car, a, a model, a car model, as their graduating project. Um, so I was, I was actually happy when they said that and, and I tried to enlighten them about some of the challenges that most likely they'll be facing. And I, I and my team did our best to support them in the project. Um, we took a lot of time, we gave them personal dedication. We dedicated a lot of effort to seeing that they learn the knowledge, not just doing it, not just us doing it for them, but if we are saying they should use this material, we do our best to explain why they need to use this material and we make sure that they do it themselves. At the end of it, they were successfully able to build a car prototype and um, it was a happy beginning for me, for them. Um, that's the way I see it. I just hope that they will continue developing and building on that foundation. Most of the materials used were sourced locally with a lot of trials and errors, but it was a learning curve for them. Each member of the team had a role to play, all to ensure that their project was a success. What I actually worked on was on the car body. Now to get the car body, what we did was we got the artificial clay first. Now the clay was then soaked in a drum. Now the soaking was done for a minimum of six hours. Now after that soaking was done, we carried out the kneading. Now the, the purpose of the kneading was to eliminate the lumps in the clay. Now after that lumps were eliminated, we now deposited the artificial clay or directly on the chassis body. Now at that stage, that was where we allowed the clay to dry for a minimum of two days. Then we started the, the initial carving. My major role in this project, in achieving this project, was the exterior aspect, bringing out the beauty, as you can see here. My work on this project, where I had more contribution, was on the body. It has the molding right from layering the fibers and then bringing out the shell of the body shell and then joining the body into a single unibody and then also joining it to the chassis frame that was constructed. I did more of the sourcing, getting of the clay, getting of the, the cylindrical pipes for the chassis, the uh, metal steels, the, though we use standard parts just like the engines, the transmission, the braking system, you could see the headlamps, all those parts were standard, was not made by us, but the body made by us because those are sourced just like what, uh, like the clay, the fiberglass, the, um, we use the POP, you know, just to make up, the, those are the materials we're able to source and actually played a role in sourcing them. I carried out the concept designs for the car body and also the chassis. So we built the chassis from scratch with locally sourced materials and also we built the body. So we got all that from the base plan of the project which was from the concept designs which I did. I was in charge of the beauty on the inside. I, I, I was in charge of the interior. I made sure that the inside was not just only comfortable to the eye or good to the eye. I made sure it was hygienic, it was safe. The journey was indeed a tasking one and it seemed they had no idea what it would take from them when they first started. The biggest challenge was the funding aspect. That was the money, the finances, the financial aspects. Because at some point we were like, we were down in the financial aspect, how we are going to actually complete the project. But, but we were able to skip through it, we add some money to paint the car and also do the interior part. One could have expected the issue with funding they had, but there were other challenges they didn't envisage. 
Getting the materials was one of the biggest challenges. Uh, when you get the material, sometimes the color is not what you want because the interior is where everyone stays and you need it to be pleasing to the eye. So we made sure that um, to, I get the material that was pleasing to the eye and the color that was so good. So getting this material was a big challenge, very, very big challenge. Even though they say they got great support from their lecturers, the initial reaction from them wasn't the same. It felt like they were embarking on a Herculean task, but in the end, they were all proud of their achievement. We try to encourage the innovation as well as uh, practical implementation of engineering solutions by our students because we realize that uh, the way the country is going, the way the uh, labor market is going, we have to ensure that we train students who themselves can provide solutions rather than uh, going out there to look for white collar jobs. So, and uh, we are glad that uh, most, uh, at least a great percentage of our students uh, assimilated this particular uh, principle in the faculty, of, uh, are working towards it, and uh, that's why we're getting results, as you can see. And we only hope to do better. When this came up, we were excited. We put up ourselves together. We know we have given them the basis that's the theoretical, the theory aspect of it, of which not car, they feel they can develop, a, they can fly an aeroplane. They have the knowledge, that's what the department has done over these years, from 100 level to 500 level. The knowledge they have acquired, it's only possibly the missionaries that could limit them. They can go anywhere or they can do anything that they can't within the confines of mechanical and theoretical as well that we have given them. So we are not uh, surprised because we know what we have given them theoretically. So when they came up with this, we're excited. We give them all the support. We want to train students who will be independent, who will be able to fly the flag of mechanical engineering out there in the labor market. So I am uh, expecting them or believing that they will take this knowledge they have acquired to establishing themselves, to becoming independent and entrepreneur, entrepreneurs. We should have several innocents in Nigeria because we have the brain work, we have, we have the capability. Building a car from scratch was no easy work, but for the team, it's just the right push they need to veer into the automobile industry. I actually have passions for cars, actually. I think since when I was a kid, so, Having to do this project was really a big dream for me. So I actually see myself pursuing a career in the automotive industry in the future. With their creativity and zeal, these young minds have once again proven that there exists raw and brilliant talent in Nigeria. With the right support from the government, they can develop their knowledge and do more amazing things for the benefit of the country.